There is silence in the laboratory, as the glass is sealed, and the wraiths are banished. Adelie lowers her hands, and her eyes return to their normal color. She turns to look at the Ascendant, and he nods. You carry the gifts of my people well, Ukamesh says. I am honored, she replies. Turning to Lucius, the chief architect says, I apologize for my brethren. It appears their cognitive abilities were influenced by this high talon. This is the one who seeks to bring another cataclysm? Lucius says, I don't think he knows that using the World Seeder will bring the Scourge down on us. He's only looking at it as a means to power. But why haven't you used the World Seeder? And how have you survived this long? The chief architect moves to the now restored vat of elixir and touches the glass. This is all that remains of my people. It contains the essence and memories of those who survived the cataclysm. I have distilled it here. Otani and the others were drawn forth from it and installed in those bodies to assist me. I have made thousands of calculations in the hopes of returning my people to a physical existence. I slipped in and out of cryostasis while Method ran all of the calculations. Method awoke me just before she had to shut down in order to preserve power. She had not yet completed all the calculations. How can this station be running out of power? Lucius asked. We saw rooms with a powerful energy source that seemed to be renewing. And so the power should be renewing. But it does not seem to be doing so. We must ascertain why. That was the task I set Otani and the others, but they seem to have been reprogrammed. Lucius nods. All right, then we have two tasks. Figure out why the station is losing power and stop the High Talon from taking control of the station. What about the battle outside? Aurelia asks. We have to help. Lucius looks to the chief architect. You promised to help. Is there enough power to launch the drones to fight? The chief architect nods. Then we'll do that. Aurelia looks from the Ascendant to her nephew and says, All right, Lucius. What do we do first, then? Lucius takes a deep breath. We find the High Talon. If we stop him, we can deal with the power loss later. So let's find him, and let's put an end to his quest for power. Welcome back for another episode of Errant Adventures. As always, I'm your game master and solo player, Steve Morrison. On this week's episode, Lucius and company try to find High Talon Idebren before he's able to gain control of the World Seeder. Find out what happens on episode 31, Whose Side Are You On Anyway? Reunited in the control room of the World Seeder, Lucius and Adelie and Aurelia, Lieutenant Mila and Dr. Petrov, in addition to the last Ascendant known to be alive, Ukamesh, take a moment to recover after the battle with the wraiths that were controlled, or at least ordered about by Victor and by High Talon Idebren. The crew is going to take a few moments to rest and recover, and then they're going to try and figure out where High Talon Idebren is on the station, and then they're going to find him, and they're going to put an end to his quest for power. So right now, Lucius is sitting at four momentum, and then he is sitting at one health, two spirit, and two supply. 
So he is pretty beaten up. He is going to gather everyone around. They're going to take a few moments and they're going to try and rest and recover a little bit with a sojourn. So when you spend time recovering with a community, in this case, this little family, both of actually family members like Aurelia, and also these found family members like Adelie and Lieutenant Mila, Lucius is going to try and recover a little bit. And to do that, we're going to roll plus heart. This is going to be plus two. Six on the action die, a six and a three on the challenge dice for a weak hit. On a weak hit with Sojourn, you have time to rest, but time is short and resources are strained. You and your allies each make one recover move instead of two, with no more than three moves total among the group. That applies to if there were multiple players. So in this case, Lucius is going to get to make one move. So this can be heal, hearten, repair, or resupply. I think because his health is sitting at one, but his spirit is sitting at two, both of those are pretty bad. So I'm not sure which is going to be bolstered by this sojourn with his community. So I'm just going to ask the oracle just to make it easy on myself. So 50-50, does he recover health? 51 or greater will be yes. 71, yes. Okay, so he does not Parton, so he does not regain spirit. So they take time to administer some medical supplies to each other. I think this also means for Aurelia that she's going to get a little bit better treatment on her arm and hopefully at least get it to a point where she can continue on without pain. So when you heal, receive medical care, or provide treatment, because this is part of a sojourn, we don't have to roll on that. We're just going to take it as an automatic strong hit. So on a strong hit, the care is helpful. If you are wounded, clear the impact and take or give plus two health. Otherwise, take or give plus three health. So we didn't get any impacts because of the choices that we made last episode. So Lucius is going to regain three health. That is going to take him back up to four health. I think he is going to take a moment to try and hearten with Adelie. So they take this moment to deal out some healing supplies, and maybe Ukamesh even has some sort of technology that is capable of giving medical aid. And so they're able to use these devices to recover some of their health, some of their vitality. And while Aurelia is undergoing this procedure to, I think, give her at least partial mobility in her arm once more, Lucius is going to take Adelie aside and they're going to have a quiet moment to talk. And Lucius is going to say, Adelie, are, are you okay? That was amazing. I... I you probably get tired of me saying this over and over again, but it's amazing the things that you can do with these abilities. Just the way that you handled those wraiths, it was incredible. Adelie says, Thank you, Lucius. I am fine. I feel strong. Like I am meant to be here. Like the fates have guided me to this place for this purpose. I don't know if it's actually the fates or if it's these abilities within me, if it's Query and Warden guiding my path. I don't know, but I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be involved in this. We have to stop the High Talon. That AI that he has with him. Warden and Query both had a very visceral reaction to it. I think it's bad, Lucius. I mean, clearly it's bad because it raised up these ascendant wraiths and bound them in service to a human. But I think it's worse than that. I think it has a greater design than maybe even the High Talon knows. We have to be cautious. Lucius says, 
all the more reason to find the High Talon and take him out and get rid of this AI as well. We can do this, Adelie. We're getting so close. We just have to keep going. She nods and says, I'm with you, Lucius, wherever this road takes us. And let's go ahead and roll heart to Harton. Another six on the action die, a four and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So again, this is fleeting, but it is effective. I don't have an impact in this either. I'm just going to take plus two spirit, which is going to take me up to four spirit as well. However, the indulgence is fleeting, envision an interruption, complication, or inner conflict. Then lose momentum minus one. So our momentum is going to go down to three, and I think the interruption is going to be Aurelia coming over, and she's like testing out her arm and the healing that her arm has undergone. And she says, I feel much better already. Are you two ready to go? We've got to find the High Talon. We have to stop him. We've got to help Nishana and Lodestar in their fight against the Ironhawks. If we can take out the High Talon, I think we can use that as leverage to stop the attack. And uh, they are going to stand up. Lucius is going to approach Ukamesh and is going to say, Chief Architect, do you have any idea where the High Talon might be? And Ukamesh says, I do not, but we can attempt to ascertain his location on the station. Come and join me. And they are going to go to the screens and they are going to attempt to gather some information to determine where High Talon Idabren is located. So we are going to go ahead and roll this plus wits. It's going to be plus three. And as an archivist, I think he is going to get to add plus one because he is recalling lore about ascendant stations. And that is maybe going to help him ascertain where the High Talon might go. Because he knows the clan Idabren. He knows some of their thinking and their strategies. If he also knows about Ascendant technology and their stations, he might be able to put two and two together to ascertain where the High Talon would go other than the place that they are in currently. So we're going to add plus one on this roll, plus our wits is going to be plus four. Six on the action die, a three and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. The information provides new insight, but also complicates your quest. Envision what you discover, then take plus one momentum. So I'm going to take my momentum up to four, and then I am going to figure out where they are. So to do that, let's go ahead and roll on an oracle. I think it makes sense for it to be descriptor and focus because I think that might give us a better sense of where on this station the high talon is. So for the descriptor, we've got 54 hoarded and the focus 39 hoarded hazard. Okay, so maybe we can combine these two tasks and as they are scanning they realize that the high talon is probably wherever that energy is being sent to that renewable energy that's being gathered wherever it's being sent to that is the second most powerful site on this station and it's very possible that the High Talon is going there because maybe he can, with the assistance of Victor, the AI, utilize that energy in some way to either take control of the station or maybe has realized that power is an issue on the station and is attempting themselves to rectify the situation so that when they gain control of the station, 
it is theirs for the taking and they can do what they want with it. So I think Ukamesh is going to turn to Lucius as he is going through the various sections of the station. And Ukamesh points with a, a long finger and says, There, that is where the energy is gathered. My scans are showing that there is increased activity in that zone. Yet my assistants, as you have seen, are not down there. And there are no other living things aboard my station other than your high talon and the rest of his entourage. It is very possible that that is where he's located. And Lucius nods and says, All right, then we have some direction to go. And then looking at the screen, let's see what peril might get in the way to keep them from getting down there easily. And I think this is the complication. This is the hazard that gets introduced. So we're just going to roll on a peril. It is part of the inner sanctum of this station. 72. Snared in an unnatural trap. So I think they're looking at it and Lucius points to the schematic and says, we can take this passageway here and it looks like this lift system may be inoperable, but we should be able to climb down the shaft there. Chief Architect, what are these symbols here? And the Chief Architect looks at the symbols and says, that is unfortunate. That seems to be an atmosphere leak. It is almost as though the atmosphere has been vented from that area. Maybe there was damage to the, that part of the station, or maybe it has been vented intentionally. You could traverse it, but it would require you to be very careful and go slowly, because you could not be certain that there are not sections of the station that are open to space, and you might get drawn out into the vastness of space. You could also go around, and he points to another part of the schematic, but it would take longer to go around. And they are looking at this area, and Aurelia says, I don't think we have time to take our time. I think we need to hurry. Who knows what the High Talon is intending to do down there? We've got to stop him, and we've got to stop him now. Lucius nods and says, I, I agree, Aunt Aurelia. Let's go ahead and take this route here. And he points again to that shaft that seems to be open to space or does not have atmosphere. He says, we have our EV suits. That should help us. We'll just have to move carefully through there. And they all agree. And I think... Lucius is going to turn to Ukamesh and say, Chief Architect, is there anything that you can do from here that would slow down the High Talon and his AI? And at that, Ukamesh says, he has an AI with him? And Lucius nods and says, yes, we, we saw it. Uh, Adelie might be able to tell you more. And Adelie says, it was... I think like Warden. It had a very powerful presence to it that I sensed. And it commanded the wraiths of your people. It commanded them to serve the High Talon. And as we've seen, they obeyed. Ukamesh considers this and says, mm, this is very concerning. I would not or could not consider why one of our own would turn against us. Young lady, Adley, you have the ability to fight an AI. You have two AIs within you. That may be enough. But if it is not, perhaps you can awaken method. My artificial 
intelligence that has assisted me on this station for thousands of years. Perhaps you can wake Method and, with Method's help, you will be able to stop this AI. Lucius looks around at everyone else and says, Everyone ready to go? And they all nod. Except, I think, Dr. Petrov, who says, Uh, actually, I think maybe I'll stay here. I can probably be more use out of the fighting and closer to the scientific research. Lucius looks to Mila questioningly, and Mila sort of shrugs and says, It's fine by me. Lucius says, All right, Dr. Petrov, you stay here with Ukamesh and see if you can help. I, I, I don't know how, but just see what you can do. And then he turns to Adelie, Aurelia, and Mila and says, All right, let's go. And they are going to head deeper into the bowels of the World Cedar on their way to face the High Talon. As they leave the deck that contains the laboratory of Ukamesh, last of the Ascendants, they begin to make their way down. And instead of doing an expedition in order to reach this area where the High Talon may be located, we are going to set a course. So when you follow a known route across hazardous terrain or within a mysterious site, roll plus supply. So in this case, my supply is plus two, and uh, we are going to roll that to see how it goes. Eight on the action die, a seven and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So you arrive. So they make it through this treacherous part of the station. They slowly make their way through these shafts, and they are in fact open to space. It looks like maybe they had some sort of like charges placed that blew them open. And as they are descending down, they can see the space battle raging outside. Now, because we got a weak hit, we are going to face a cost or complication. So we can either face costs en route or face a complication at the destination. Envision what you encounter. So let's go ahead and ask the Oracle what we encounter. I'm going to roll a waypoint real quick within the Sanctum to see what this area is that they arrive at. 58 is going to be Rampant Biological Infestation. Okay, so this is interesting. So they reach this level, and it's basically the entire section of this part of the station is devoted to housing and storing these cylinders full of this, like, molten metal energy source that they came across before. So they're probably descended through that main shaft that they crossed a couple times, and they these cylinders are brought into this area. And I think as they make their way down through the elevator shaft, the lift shaft, they enter this area and looking around, there's all this greenery that is just verdant and filling up the corridors. And let's see what kind of peril there might be here. 62. Restless Dead Awaken. I think we all know what that means. It means more of those ascendant wraiths are around. I think this time, instead of being these incorporeal wraiths or being in the simulacrum of an ascendant, they are actually inhabiting the plants and the area that they are crossing through. 
And so these vines are lashing out at them as they are proceeding through. And I think they are going to have to sort of overcome this situation. Lucius is in the lead. He is sort of firing his plasma pistol down this corridor, burning away some of these vines. And I think Adelie is beside him with her paragon abilities, trying to burn them away. And we are going to do a face danger. And I think this is going to be uh, plus heart because I think it's going to be resolve and some of Lucius's command ability as he is like holding his group of adventurers together as they're progressing through this just overgrown corridor as all of these viney terrors are lashing out at them. So it's going to be plus heart. And I spent some XP on a new asset. In this case, Adelie is now no longer just a bonded connection. She is now a sidekick. So there is a sidekick asset, and I have now purchased that with some of that experience from last episode. And she is able to assist. And what this means is instead of him getting a bonus from her connection ability, he gets the opportunity to re-roll his action die if he rolls low. So this is going to be plus two on this as we are going to face danger. So I've got a five on the action die. I've got a three and a six on the challenge dice for a weak hit. Because I've got a weak hit, I'm not going to re-roll the action die. So we're just going to stick with that weak hit, which means you succeed, but at a troublesome cost. Make a suffer move. So I think it's just going to be a loss of momentum. So his momentum is going to go down to three. As they are slowly progressing forward, it takes time, but they are able to pass through all of this vegetal area. And these wraiths cannot stand before the power of Adelie and before the sort of fury of Lucius and Aurelia and Mila as they are cutting their way through with their weapons. They manage to progress through this corridor and they reach a doorway that is going to lead into the central chamber where this storage facility for this power is housed. And I think they are pretty certain that High Talon Idebren and his entourage are on the other side of this door. But we don't know that for sure. So I'm going to ask the Oracle, because it's possible only some of them are here. So let's go ahead and say that this is likely that they are all here, that this is basically the High Talon's base of operations within the station. So I think it's likely. 26 or greater. 47, yes. So they are all here, which means there are eight Bloodhawks, the High Talon himself, Victor, the AI, and Madame Brine, the paragon crone who is with them plus there might be an unknown number of wraiths within so before we progress any further i have been remiss in that i think we should mark a couple progress on our vow so we have found the artifact we are progressing through to find and stop the Iron Hawks. We are currently at one box of progress plus two ticks in our second box. We should take two ticks of progress for overcoming the wraiths back in the laboratory. And then I think we should take an additional two ticks of progress for now having traversed through this area and having found the base of operations for the Iron Hawk. So we're sitting at two boxes on our progress track for our vow, plus 
two ticks in our third box of progress. And they are poised outside the room leading into the storage facility for this power source that essentially runs this station. And there seems to be some sort of issue here. So I think Lucius is going to take a moment before they rush in to try and get a lay of the land, and he's going to try and gather some information. I think he's even going to do that by attempting to hack into the system and see if there are any sort of security cameras or security features within that he can take over and observe. So this is going to use his tech ability. It's going to add plus one, and we are going to roll plus wits. So it's going to be plus four on this. Nine on the action die, a 10 and a two on the challenge dice for another weak hit. So the information provides new insight, but also complicates the quest. Envision what you discover, then take plus one momentum. So once again, momentum is going to go up to four. Now I got a weak hit, so I can choose to press my luck. If I do, reroll all dice and add plus two instead of plus one. So I'm going to do that. So instead of taking that plus one momentum and being at three momentum, I'm going to reroll all dice. I'm going to reroll this at plus two. So I'm actually at plus five on this reroll. Here we go. 10 on the action die, a seven and a one on the challenge dice for a strong hit. So that paid off. So we've got on a strong hit, you discover something helpful and specific. The path you must follow or action you must take to make progress is made clear. Envision what you learn, then take plus two momentum. Wonderful. So that's going to take me up to five momentum instead of the four that I would have gotten with that weak hit. And then we need to figure out what helpful and specific thing that we learn. Let's just go back to the well and roll on action and theme. 100, withdraw, and the theme, 34, fame, withdraw, fame. So the high talon is fame. He's, he's famous, uh, is well known across the forge as this terrifying war leader and this absolute vicious enemy. So withdraw. Fame. I think maybe this has to do with his connection with his Bloodhawks. They have followed him for a long time and they are his elite troops. But maybe they're starting to wonder what they're doing on this ancient artifact and how it's going to advance his goals. And maybe there is some question of whether or not what he is doing here is actually benefiting the clan or if it's just benefiting him. And I think maybe what Lucius discovers is he overhears a couple of these Bloodhawks talking about the High Talon, who's on the other side of the room doing stuff with Victor and Madame Brine, and these Bloodhawks are on the far side of the room and they're talking back and forth about what all of this is about. The Ironhawks already hold the most feared and powerful weapons in the forge. What weapons and powers could they discover on this ancient, abandoned station that could possibly rival the power that they possess now? Is this simply just a vanity project for the High Talon? Is he just out here on his own? And I misspoke earlier. There are 10 Bloodhawks, because two of the Bloodhawks that they fought earlier survived. And maybe some of those are wondering about this, because they saw their friends get killed. They know that there are Tarquins here, and they're starting to wonder, is this a clan versus clan battle, or is this personal? The High Talon has talked about Lodestar in a very personal way, as if they are his personal enemies. 
So there may be this sense of doubt as to what this operation is, and Lucius may be able to take advantage of that in the future. We already know that there's at least one Ironhawk who sympathizes with Lodestar, and that's Captain Simeon, the captain of the Winnower. Could there be others? Could those others be members of the Bloodhawks, the High Talons personal warriors? I don't know, but I think we're probably going to find out. So Lucius hears this and he relays this information to his companions. They are looking at this interior view of the storage facility beyond, and I think they see that the High Talon and Victor, the AI, and Madame Brine are in the center of the room. And I think looking at it, and maybe this is the other sort of piece of information that provides new insight, they see that there is some sort of damaged unit where the cylinders would plug in. It seems like the cylinders keep plugging in, opening to pump the energy into the station, and then that gets spilled out and is sort of like cooling and then sort of hardening in this area around. So there are these like mounds of this cooled molten metal that has some sort of energy property. So they might be able to use that in the future. So they are observing this, and Lucius looks around at the others who are assembled with him, and he says, All right, we know that the High Talon is in there, and we are here. We have our weapons. We could go in guns blazing, but there are ten Bloodhawks inside, and maybe there are some doubters in there. Maybe we could talk to them, but even if we convince a few of them to join our side that we are vastly outnumbered. Is this, is this what we want to do? Or can we come up with a different way to approach this? And I think they are all agreed on the fact that they don't want to take the Bloodhawks head on. So is there a way that they can draw some of those Bloodhawks away? And I think that is probably likely. So let's go ahead and try to secure an advantage. So this is going to be Lucius setting up alerts in the system that are going to potentially send off security notices into the room and basically create false signatures showing that maybe Lodestar troops are landing on the station, and that will potentially send some of the Bloodhawks away. So this is going to be secure and advantage, plus wits, and I think it's going to be plus tech again, because Lucius is hacking into the system to send these alerts. So this is going to be plus four once again. Eight on the action die, a five and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. We are going to choose one. I can either take plus two momentum, or I can add plus one on my next move. I'm going to take the momentum, so that's going to take me up to seven, and I think it works. He is able to successfully set up some of these alerts, but I think because it's just a weak hit, it's probably only going to draw off a few of them. I mean, they probably operate in squads of four. So maybe like one of those squads is going to go off, which is going to leave six Bloodhawks remaining. They are going to look around and see if there is anything else that they can do to set things up better for themselves before they go in. So let's go ahead and gather some information once more. It's just going to be plus wits, which is plus three. Here we go. Seven on the action die, a six and an eight on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So the information provides new insight, but also complicates the quest. So this is going to take us to eight momentum, and we are going to roll again on action and theme to see what insight they gain. Twelve. Begin. 
five. Begin balance. Okay, so I think a couple of the Bloodhawks are engaged in the act of trying to repair this input area where the energy source is connected and sent into the system. So a couple of them are focused on that, and I think that Victor is overseeing that. So they are separated. There are four Bloodhawks who are on their way out having received this alert. That means there are basically now four Bloodhawks who are on alert, plus the High Talon and Madam Brine. I think Madam Brine is probably sitting down somewhere. She has done her part in getting them into this portion of the station and is now waiting. And I think this is where the complication comes in because I think she senses Adelie. And Adelie turns to Lucius and says, I can sense her, Lucius. And I think she senses me. They know we're here. We're going to have to do something quick. And they are going to have to move forward. And it is time to enter this room and enter the frame. When you initiate combat, envision your objective and give it a rank. If the combat includes discrete challenges or phases, set an objective with a rank for each. Then roll to see if you are in control. So I think this fight is going to have discrete challenges or phases. And I think those are going to basically break down into the Bloodhawks, Madame Brine, and High Talon Idebren on his own. I'm going to factor in Victor as basically part of the High Talons track. And I'm going to say that the Bloodhawks are formidable as a group. Madame Brine is dangerous, and the High Talon is formidable as well. I think it is probably likely that they're going to have to make progress on the Bloodhawk track and maybe the Madame Brine track before they can even start working on the High Talon. But let's see how this is going to go. So we are going to enter the fray and they are going to blast into the room and they're going to try and spread out and get a good sort of range of fire on this. And I think because they're not catching anybody unaware, this is going to be on the move. They're entering the room as Madame Brine kind of looks up and says, They're here! And the High Talon turns towards the doorway and says, Bloodhawks, attend. And the doors blow open as Lieutenant Mila leads the way, rifle shouldered, and enters into this room. And we're going to roll plus edge as we are entering the fray. Plus two on this. Eight on the action die, a nine and a four on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So on a weak hit, we are going to either take plus two momentum or be in control. I've got eight momentum, so I'm feeling pretty good about that for the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and take control. So Lucius is right behind Lieutenant Mila. Plasma pistol in one hand. Brutus is floating beside him, and they are going to just go straight in, and they are going to try and maneuver around to get behind some cover as they are engaging with the first line of Bloodhawks. And so we are going to go ahead and maneuver. This is going to be plus edge, and this is gain ground. Plus two on this. Five on the action die, a two and a five on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So on a weak hit, you can choose to mark progress, take momentum, or add plus one to the next move. I'm going to take progress, and we're going to fill one box on the Bloodhawk track. As Lucius coming up behind Lieutenant Mila, 
fires off a couple shots. Mila is sort of sweeping the room with this covering fire. Aurelia and Adelie are coming in behind Lucius and they spread out to these containers Not containers of this energy, but I think that they are empty containers that have been set aside after the liquid within them has drained out basically onto the floor. The system that was in this room then picked those up, moved them to another section of the storage facility, and just kind of set them there. And so there are these tall glass containers that are spread throughout this room and are party of heroes takes cover behind some of them is going to line up some shots and is going to go ahead and fire off some shots and the blood hawks mostly dive for cover as they try to return fire lucius is going to step out and he's going to call out to the blood hawks and he's gonna say your high talon is leading you astray If you let him complete his mission, he's going to bring a cataclysm down upon the forge. Much like when the scourge swept across our old worlds, they will come again and they will destroy us all. Don't let him do this. Stop him. And he is going to attempt to gain ground with heart this time as he is trying to use that nugget of information that he got to convince some of these bloodhawks to turn away. Let's find out how it goes. We've got a five on the action die. We've got two ones on the challenge dice for a strong hit with an opportunity. So on a strong hit, I can choose two. So I'm going to mark progress once again. That is going to fill a box of progress there. And I am going to actually say that it's going to fill two boxes of progress because I think it downgrades them to just dangerous as two of these Bloodhawks turn and say, we knew it. We knew that this was a foolish task. We knew that he was leading us astray. We will not fight for you anymore, Idebrin. And they turn on their fellows and fire away. And now it is dangerous. And they are now fighting with two Bloodhawks on their side. Lucius is going to press this advantage that he just got. And is also going to increase his momentum up to 10 as the second option there. He is going to press the advantage and strike against the Bloodhawks. This is going to be attacking at a distance, rolling plus edge, and I think because Lieutenant Mila is assisting here, we are going to get plus one from Lieutenant Mila and plus one from Brutus as well. So it's plus four on this strike as he fires at the remaining Bloodhawks who are trying to defend the High Talon. Five on the action die, a four and a one on the challenge dice for a strong hit. Mark progress twice, which means that this is going to be four boxes of progress, which is going to take us to seven full boxes of progress as Lucius retains control. He is going to take decisive action and he's going to call out and say to the new Bloodhawk allies, I know they're your allies, they're your friends, they're your compatriots, but if we don't Get to the High Talon. He is going to destroy us all. Push forward. And they are going to attack and try to take out the rest of the Bloodhawks. So taking decisive action, Lucius and his compatriots are advancing to the next set of these cylinders. And they are going to try and overrun the Bloodhawk position. We are rolling the challenge dice versus a progress track of seven Here we go. A seven and a 10 versus seven, a miss. You are defeated or your objective is lost. Pay the price. They try to push forward and they make progress. But just as they're about to overrun 
the four remaining Bloodhawks who are defending the High Talon. Madame Brine steps forward and says, That is enough. You will serve your lord or you will die. And she holds out her hand and the two Bloodhawks who turned against their friends seize up. They twist, they shudder, and then they turn their weapons back towards Lucius and his allies and they open fire. Thanks for listening to Errant Adventures, and thanks so much to Sirenscape for the lovely ambient sounds and music throughout the episode. If you enjoyed the show, please tell anyone and everyone in your life about it. And if you haven't already, please rate and review the show on your favorite podcast app. It really does help others find me. If you want to interact with me, my handle on Instagram and Twitter is at Errant Solopod, or you can email me at Errant Solopod at gmail.com. I also post short fiction and campaign related materials on my website, errantadventurespod.com. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next time.